Hey guys and welcome to this 11th part of the first steps in preparation series. Um, in this tutorial we're going to cover the second part of the lighting with lamps tutorial so to say. And um, we already talked about the first three lamps and there are five different lamps in Blender. So yeah, open up a new window of Blender and just let's just delete the default cube and let's add a monkey. RX45 Let's move it up a little bit. Actually, let's just make sure it um, orthographic. Let's make sure it actually touches the ground with its chin and its in the back of its head, so it actually casts a nice shadow. Otherwise, we'll look wrong afterwards. Now let's just um, add a plane. Let's scale it up so it can actually cast a shadow onto something, and then let's just um, select this lamp. And in the lamp properties, let's change it to a hemi lamp. Okay, and you can see um, for the hemi lamp we've got only very few settings, and that is because um, a hemi lamp does, just like the sun lamp, not have any kind of fall off, and also it doesn't cast shadows. Okay, so the hemi lamp is supposed to, as its name already implies, because hemi comes from hemisphere, supposed to simulate like a very cloudy day um, where where you only have like this very diffuse kind of lighting and because the lighting is coming from the sky from everywhere it doesn't really cast a clear shadow as opposed to the sun okay so yeah that's what we're going for now um, ordering that the exact same settings as for the other lamps and um, yeah let's just go to about here so you can actually see the back side um, from 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 the view of the hemi lamp, control alt zero to position or um, or camera. Let's move it back a little bit, and then let's just hit F twelve. As you can see, that's what you get. Um, a few things to note here: you do not have a fall off towards the outer region. Okay, it's it's it's, it's completely gray everywhere. It doesn't cast a shadow, as I mentioned, and it kind of also lights the backside of your of your monkey okay but not that strongly okay so there is a difference between faces facing the the um, hemi lamp and faces facing away from them but as an overall thing uh, it looks very even and very flat and boring in a way but yeah um now you never really light a scene only with hemi lamps or at least i never did but you can use them in a combination, and we will talk more about combinations after um, the other lamp. Okay, so, yeah. And usually because it's supposed to simulate, or at least in this case, to simulate, like, sky, you want to make it slightly bluish, maybe. Unless you have, like, a red sky, then you make it reddish. And then let's just render it, and you can see that's what you get. As I said, um, on its own it's quite boring and flat, but in combination with other lamps it looks fantastic. Although uh, I, I, I barely ever use the Hemi lamp because you can also achieve a similar and slightly better effect or slightly different effect with um, environment lighting, but more on that in the next tutorial, if everything goes according to, to schedule. Okay, so yeah, that's the Hemi lamp. Now, let's just change the color back to white. And by the way, um, just to show you what the color wheel, how the color wheel works, here we've got RGB, and here we've got like the brightness of the color. Okay, so you can um, achieve, um, achieve, adjust uh, red, green, and blue. And yeah, you can just pretty much uh, get every, every color you want. Okay, so well, let's go with like this color. And then under HSV, you've got three different values, but with only them you can also um, get every color you want but instead of RGB you kind of manipulate um, uh, like where it is on this radius okay then how far it is away from the center and also the brightness okay so just a different way to actually adjust your colors and then we've also got the hex code for those who are familiar with this um, each uh, always two digits okay so this C and this five actually represents um, the red colors. F and F, in this case, the green ones, and F and C, the blue ones, okay? So, um, you always can enter values between 0 and F, 
So we have like 16 characters. Uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 4. Yeah, exactly. 16, that's also why it's called a hexa hexagonal. I think that's what it's called in English, right? I mean, in German it is hexagonal. But anyway. Um, uh, yeah. So that's your color wheel. And therefore, if under HSV you put that S back to 0, no matter what is um, in those other values, you always get um, a complete white. And that's what you want. So... Okay, and then let's just change this to an area lamp. And you can see you've got quite a few settings. Um, and the first thing to note with area lamps is that they are much, much brighter by default, okay? So if we render this, you can see we get this very re weird result. First of all, we've got pretty harsh, very harsh shadows. Second of all, like all the other lamps besides the Hemi lamp, only the parts actually facing the lamp are lit. And third of all, it's way too overpowering, okay? You can see everything is completely white or pitch black and it's got only a very slight fall off there so obviously the energy value is too high however um first thing you should do is you should adjust the distance okay so let's hit escape and as i told you before um one of those squares is one blender unit in square so let's just move down our plane a little bit so we can actually see those squares and therefore, the distance here is approximately, let's say, 10 blender units, okay? it doesn't. You don't need to be exact, so let's just set the fall off to somewhat below 10. So let's set the, uh, the distance, I mean, sorry, the distance to, let's say, 9. And the distance is just, as you can see, um, actually the length of this, um, of this line. So this indicates how far, how big the distance is. So 9 is not enough, so let's just set this down to, let's say around like just like that okay like this now let's make a test render of that as well and you can see now you've got like a decent um, intensity here you can also see the fall off is less um, is more smooth and everything looks just way, way better than before um, yeah but still we've got very harsh shadows so um, one other thing to notice that besides energy which just controls the energy as before and distance we also have gamma and what that does the lower your gamma value um, like the more uh, contrastless it gets so let me just show you that if we have it like at back at one it looks like it did just before okay if we set it to 0.5 um, I, uh, let me just see yeah, it becomes like um, more even everything is um yeah less as if it had less contrast okay so yeah you can see this becomes a bit brighter and the bright colors become a bit less bright so yeah and if you go to zero which is quite a bad idea by actually you can see everything looks grayish and ugly so usually i leave the gamma value at one because uh yeah that just works quite well. Um, and one other thing other thing to note, we'll notice that more clearly when using the um, soft shadows, but usually um, aerial lamps take much more time to render, okay? So um, dependent on your setup, it can take up to four times more. Um, your render times can increase up to four times as much as before. So you want to be careful with them, okay? So especially for animations where um, render times are quite crucial, uh, with animations, you don't want to use aerial lamps usually, okay? So, um, yeah. Now, negative, this layer only specular and diffuse is the exact same thing as always. Nothing fancy about that. And then we've got the shadows. Uh, as you can see, as all the other lamps besides the spot lamp, this also has no shadow and ray shadow. And no shadow is rather boring. Let's just try that. And you can see you get the same result as with, with all the other lamps. So let's just reject ray shadow. Once again, color this layer only and only shadow. Same thing as before. And then we get to the sampling and to the different methods of, uh, well, calculating your shadows. Um, yeah, as always, you can increase the sample. So let's set them to five for now. And you will get a very noisy result, okay? But you now have soft shadows. And you can see, yeah, obviously the samples aren't high enough, but let's not worry about that just now. 
And as always, you have adaptive and constant, okay? So constant just taking more time. It doesn't really increase the quality, in my opinion. And adaptive, you can see right now, it took 2 seconds and 19 hundredth of a second. Um, if you set a threshold higher, then it takes less time. So let's set it to, let's say, 0.1. You cannot really see a difference. And you can also not really see a difference in render time, unfortunately. Now, if we set this threshold to, like, 1, by the way, I think 10 is the highest value you can... No, here it is. It is finished with 1. Maybe you can force it to something. No, you cannot force it. Okay, 1 is the highest. And you can see, with 1, it takes um, still nearly the same amount of time. However, the quality is kind of um, compromised a little bit. Okay, so if we compare this to default... Uh, let's just focus on this area for now. Maybe it makes a difference. Mm, not really. Yeah, you can see. Uh, usually, let's just set it as to point 0.1. Because why not? Um, but yeah, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. Now, you can see this third option. And that third option is only delivered if you use um, area lamps. And constant jitter is kind of a method to um, speed up your render times. Because... Area lamps, as mentioned before, take much more time to render. And therefore, um, this additional option is here to reduce them. Now, in my opinion, it doesn't really work, okay? So, with adaptive, you can see 2.16. And with constant chittered, you can see it takes 2.28. Okay, now that was rather unfortunate because it's supposed to be faster. And on top of that, you can see... Um, Well, no, actually, it's not supposed to be faster because it's just supposed to be um, give you better results with lower samples. Actually, that, that's that's the background. Now you can see this doesn't look good at all. It looks less low sampled because you've got pretty clear lines, but it also looks as if there were a lot of a lot of lot of light sources over here, and each one of them throwing a very sharp shadow. So this is not what, that's not what you want, okay? And therefore, we got this those few checkboxes down here, and each one of them is in a way, trying to improve the render, or in the case of Umbra, to change it. Okay, so if we check Umbra, you get this very bad result. Um, the shadow's becoming even harsher and even weirder. So I don't like Umbra at all. I've never used it before, I believe. Let's uncheck that. Now you can also choose Ditter. And Ditter is actually pretty cool. Uh, you can see, even though we only have five samples, it looks quite um, even. Okay, so compared to adaptive it looks less noisy but on the other hand it also looks um, a bit weird now I will show you later how to use this digital effect for an, an, an artistic purpose it's pretty cool but uh, yeah not quite a solution either and if you go to chitter uh, then it just pretty much makes the exact same thing as adaptive so um, but it takes more time okay so if we come if, if we compare this to Adaptive. You can see maybe it even looks a bit better, but it takes also more time. So, yeah, I'm not too big of a fan of that either. Now, if you um, check Jitter and Ditter, you can also see that um, the Ditter effect is kind of um, cancelled because the Jitter effect is like overpowering a little bit. And if you also check Umbra, you can see you get a very ugly result again because that very harsh character of the um, Umbra is also being considered. So, yeah. Now, of course, if you just increase the samples, let's say adaptive, let's go to, tw to f 12. Now you can see it takes much more time now. I guess about five seconds, maybe seven even. 10, okay. I'm bad at guessing, apparently. 10 seconds. You can see it's still noisy. It's still quite noisy. And if now we go to Chitter, to constant Chitter, and we click Chitter, which is similar to Adaptive, it's supposed to give us a better result than Adaptive. Let's see if that is true. Okay. Yeah, I think it actually does give you a better result. It looks less noisy and more a bit more even, but it also takes a bit more time to render, okay? So, yeah, just play around with it. Usually, with constant and chittered, it might give an improvement, but yeah. 
Um, yeah, but as a general tip, if you can avoid um, aerial lamps, do so, because they do take more time to render in the same quality. Um, okay, now let's put the samples back to, let's say, five. Yeah, that's okay. And now let's take a look at those options down here. So those options just change the way your aerial lamp appears, so in size, okay? So right now it's set to square, and you can increase the size and decrease the size, okay? Now this is not the same as increasing or decreasing the size with the S key on your keyboard, okay? Because as you can see, if you click S, let me just open the properties panel here. If you click on S, you can see the overall scale um, you can see the overall scale becomes bigger. And that is a problem because um, if you want to increase the size of this plane, of this area, then it also works with S, okay? But at the same time, um, it becomes bigger relative to the Blender unit. So now this um, distance of 5.688 suddenly is like 5.506 times bigger, okay? And that just makes everything look as outblown as before, as you can see here. Okay, so this is not what you want. So instead, um, you just set that back to one. And now what you do, you use the size down here. Okay, so let's set that to five. And now with 12, you can see it's the exact same intensity, but the only thing that changed is the soft size, okay? And for those of you who watched my last tutorial, maybe you remember um, when I switched to GIMP and when I tried to explain how soft shadows actually um, work, but like, let's say this monkey throws like this kind of shadow, then it's because this light ray over here reaches to here, and this light ray over here reaches to like here, okay? And the same goes from over there. And then this cone here is like pitch black, and then there's like a gradient effect, and then this outer area where all the lights from the whole plane reach um, becomes like very bright, okay? So that's like the effect. And if this um, area increases, uh, then, because of the greater angle here, um, the light can come, can actually reach the spots behind the monkey in a bigger area, so to say, okay? So, sorry about my English, but that's kind of how I can explain it. And therefore, you want to use this size, because in that case, the uh, distance isn't changed. That is, that is very important. But as you can see, you can also um, change the shape of your aerial lamp into a rectangle, okay? So now you can see x value is 5 and y is 1. And you can see you get this stretched effect over here. And now let's make it a little bit more extreme. Let's set this, the y size to, let's say, 0 0.05. So it is very tiny. And then let's just increase the x to 10. And now if we hit F12, um, I've never tried something this extreme, so maybe it will give us a few issues, but... Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay, you can see in, like, this direction it's quite sharp, or more or less sharp, and in this direction it's very... it's got a very a very um, long gradient effect, okay? So this is not usually what you're going for, but you can see the effect it is having. And if we set this to something reasonable, something reasonable, let's just say um, 10 and 2, then if we rotate that like this... And now if we render this, you can see, once again, it's different in this direction than it is in this direction. And you can also see it's very noisy again. That's because once you check rectangle, you can see you've got two sampling um, options. You've got X and Y. And right now X is still 5, but Y is at 1. So we have to set that to 5 again as well. And now we've got a somewhat smoother, smoother result. Um, yeah. And now the cool thing, or the, the artistic effect I was talking about earlier, is if you now check Ditter, and you leave the samples as they are, so they're even. And now if you hit F12, you can see... You get those very funny lines, or you're supposed to get them. Didn't really work. Just give me just a second. Let's just um, change the ratio to even... Let's set this to 20. And now let's try again. Yeah, it doesn't really work the way I thought it would. Yeah, but you can see... You can see those lines now, much more intensely than before. And if you do it right, which I apparently just didn't quite get, let me just um, move it a little bit closer to our monkey. 
something like this. And now let's just put that to 5 and that 2.5. Like this. Or actually that went to 1. Let's try this again. Yeah, that's better. You can see you get those very, very cool looking lines. Okay, so if you're going for a soft shadow, that's obviously not what you want. But if you're going to some kind of artistic per, um, look, then maybe this is exactly what you're looking for. Um, yeah. And the lower the samples, let's just put this to 3 and 3. The more um, obvious the effect is, is becoming, okay? So now it's really like pixelated a little bit. It looks very weird, but in a way also quite funny. Okay, so let's go to adaptive. And let's put this back to 5 and that to a square. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's more or less it for the lamps. Now let's just take a look at some of the some of the lighting setups, okay? So there are a lot of different ways to light a scene, okay? So let me just show you two ways, okay? First one is kind of a setup that, that works quite well for outdoor lighting scenes uh, with the sun. And the other setup is like a studio setup for um, lighting like an object or something. Uh, it's called a three-point lighting. And there are um, quite a lot of different variations of three-point lighting, depending on what you want to show. Um, but, yeah. Um, okay, so let's just delete our aerial lamp and let's add in like a... Um, let me just see... A spot lamp. Let's go to top view. And let's put it to somewhere over, um, somewhere over there. Just yeah, somewhere over there. Let's then just duplicate it. Let's move it to over there. Okay, and then let's just duplicate it once again. Let's move it to somewhere over there. Okay, and then let's just take our camera and let's move the camera to over here. Let's just rotate it a little bit. Um, okay, now let's just rotate our spot lamp so they actually face the monkey. Like this, and now let's just, let me just expl explain something here. This lamp over here. Okay, this lamp is the, our key light. It is the main light. It's also usually the strongest light. Um, I will show you a setup where it is not the strongest light, but usually it is. And then this lamp over here is like the fill light. Okay, it is weaker than our key light, but not much, and it doesn't give you any specular reflection. So only our key light gives us actually some specular reflections in my uh, in this example. And this is our backlight, and the backlight kind of has the purpose of separating our monkey from the background by illuminating its edges or yeah just the the, um, the rim so to say not quite sure how we call what you call that so let's go to zero um and actually we need to make a few adjustments first so with the uh, fill light let's just disable specular let's set the energy to let's say 0.5 uh, actually to 0.6 okay and let's leave the others as they are for now so now if we have 12 that's the result you get. Now everything is a bit too weak, so let's just um, select all of them and let's just go to top view and let's just change it so that the center of the monkey is actually the point where we scale to. So since it is in the center of the scene, let's just switch to 3D cursor. Let's just move it up, down a little bit and let's just try it once again. Yeah, that's better. Okay, and you can see, um, well, now the shadows are a bit irritating, so let's just um, move our plane to the second layer for now. And you can see what we get. We get, like, uh, this area over here with the specular reflections, which is lighted by our key light. But then we also made sure that we don't have any um, very dark black part, because we got a fill light over here, which is a bit weaker. And then we've got, like... Um, those specular reflections over here going on from our um, backlight, okay? 
which kind of separates the monkey from its background. Now you can see we still got like a black area over here and if you want to make sure you don't have any of them just go back and just change this fill light to a hemi lamp because as you might remember hemi lamps don't cast any shadows and they also illuminate faces that face away from them and now if we have 12 you can see it's much more even but also it's too flat so let's just decrease the energy of 2.3 and that's much better that's much better okay now you can play with those values and positions and so on so if we select our first lamp but if we increase the energy to let's say two you can see it is it looks much much brighter now much more also you automatically focus to the left side of your render okay um and one other thing you could do you could for example um change this to be a or the backlight to be a hemi light as well which would then look something like this a much more even lighting um and you can really play with those settings one cool thing as well is to use um colors in your lights and complementary colors on top of that i think they're called complementary colors let me just take a look one second um And it says, complementary colors as well, okay. Um, and that just means the colors I like to use are uh, blue and orange. Or, yeah, you can just see in a second what that would look like. So we, our key light is like an orangish color, but only slight. You, you don't want to go with orange like this, okay? Just, just slightly orangish, something like this. And then let's just change our fill light to be a slightly bluish color. Okay, let's just see how that looks. Yeah, looks looks quite cool. Um, I think this might be a bit too overpowering. Let's go with point, 1.3. Yeah, you can see it looks al already much more, uh, well, you cannot really say alive, but much, much better than before with just white lighting. Okay, and it really looks like this is like this, this not the sun, but like a warm light, and this like the shadow, which is kind of bluish. And yeah, you can get some great effects this way. Now there's one other uh, way to light your scene I'd like to discuss, which is called rim lighting. And in my opinion, rim lighting is fairly difficult to achieve, okay? So what rim lighting means is just that, uh, let's just press F11, is that your model is like in a very dark um, and sinister atmosphere, and you can only see like the outside of it, okay? Um, it's kind of that effect from that you also get in comics, you know, when you have like the bad guy and then there's like a thunder and lightning going on and the, only the side of his face is actually illuminated. And therefore you need a very um, weak key light and also a very weak um, fill light. Let's just do it. Let's set our key light back to white because we don't want it to draw any attention to it. And the same goes for the uh, hemi lamp. Let's set this one to 0 0.05 and this one to 0 0.1. Let's give it a test render. Uh, that's still too bright. So let's set this one to 0 0.05 and this one to a 0 0.025. Oh, it's still too bright. Let's just set to zero for now. Okay, that's perfect. That is perfect. And now we change, we go to top view and we change the backlight to be a um, spotlight. Let's rotate it around like this. And now we need to make sure that it actually illuminates the parts of our monkey that we want. So as you can see here, we want it to illuminate like the ear, then the rim, can you say rim to th this kind of area? The rim of our monkey, eye, lid kind of thing, and the yeah, those parts, and maybe the tip of the nose, okay? So go to the top view right now, you can see that should be just about right. Okay, now let's just set it to a very high number to let's say um, 1.5. Okay, not very high, but much higher. And let's also give it a slightly bluish touch because it's like, you know, thunder from the outside through heavy rain. Okay, now if, it, if we press F12, you can see that's what, it, that's what we get. Now, it doesn't look very impressive with our monkey because our monkey is kind of an innocent... Um, dump character, but if you feel like if you have like a bad looking character, if you have a, a human being that looks really mad, then it gets a great effect. But it's not quite strong enough or um, backlight, so let's just change it to let's say two, ah, two point five even. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, now I think our key light or this one is still too bright. 
you don't want it to be black but you don't want it to be um really a gray either either, either, either. either. here we go okay and you can see that's the kind of effect you get and now um yeah, you can see this. It gives you this um, sinister, this um, this dark um, feeling, that atmosphere. Yeah, and we've got a very, very scary monkey here. Um, anyway, those are a few techniques to use with your three-point lighting setup. Okay, you can also go for a four-point lighting, where one of them kind of simulates like the sun reflecting from the top of its head, or you can go for a two-point lighting, which is very even if you do it the way it's usually done. Yeah, you can go uh, with a lot of different techniques and ways to light your scene. There are other sites on the internet that um, focus specifically on lighting. Um, yeah, just Google them. They are quite cool also for, bl for uh, Blender. And yeah, now the other thing I'd like to show you is like a normal daylight scene, okay? So let's just bring back our plane like this. And now let's... Oh, by the way, if we render it without the lamp, as you might guess, it is going to be pitch black, except for the background. Anyway, let's add a lamp. And let's first of all add, add a hemi lamp. okay? So let's just move it up. Like this. And as I said before, it doesn't matter where you position it, you could position it down here. If you render this, you can see it lights your scene. So it's just telling Blender um, what direction to cast light from, but not where the light starts, okay? But in order to keep it well organized, just move it above your monkey so it actually makes some sense. Okay, now let's just change the color to a slightly bluish color and let's turn the energy way down to about 0.3. Perfect. Now let's also move our camera a little closer to the monkey, like this. Now let's just um, add another lamp, this time a sun lamp. Let's go to top front view. Let's rotate a little bit, and then from the side, let's also rotate a little bit like this. Okay, and now let's set the color for this lamp to a slightly yellowish, orangish color, even a slightly reddish color if you're going for like a sundown, a uh, sunset. I'm sorry, something th something like this, and let's leave it leave it at one because um, obviously your 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 sun is much stronger than your sky, and then if we have twelve you can see we get this effect. Now, it's already a slightly reddish color, which is why it looks kind of like an, an evening atmosphere. Um, but if we change this to a more yellowish color, and now you can see this H value is pretty useful. Like this. You can see it becomes more like day. Now, it's kind of hard to see that with such a simple scene, but I'm sure you can get what we're, what it's all about. Now, let's also just, for fun, check sky. And let's leave it at that, actually. And now it isn't quite as black in the background. Okay, now one other thing that is also quite important, of course, is to make sure that we've got ray shadows checked. Uh, let's say samples to, let's say, 12. Soft size, soft size to 2. Adaptive 0.1. As I said before, it doesn't really make that big of a difference, but uh, yeah, why not? And now we have 12. You get this kind of effect. And... Let me just show you that from a different perspective. And yeah, of course it's still a rather boring scene. And I will also show you how to achieve a similar effect with um, environment lighting instead of a hemi lamp. And how to use ambient occlusion. And ambient occlusion would also improve this render probably quite a bit. But more on that in the next tutorial. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. If you have any qu kind of questions or comments or ideas or whatever, just feel free to post them in the comments below each video. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time.